Recently, I started learning Ruby Motion uh, to write iOS apps. Uh, Ruby Motion has a compiler, a re-implemented Ruby, and a runtime. So you can produce um, OSS, iOS, Android apps. Um, so I thought I'd document this process. So I've downloaded a, a version. Uh, there's also a UI kit uh, framework, which I'm not very familiar with, but um, I will be uh, learning this and documenting it. So when um, you have your Ruby motion installed, I went ahead and did motion create. Um, navigation is the name of the project. So I'm just playing with um, navigation things, things you can click on to go from place to place. So I'm going to launch this in Vim. You can open it up in any of um, your preferred editor. So this is a rake file. So just have a look and go into a gem file. We have a gem rake to install and um, have a look at the resources. So we have some images here and um, have another look at the spec, main spec. So this is a, a testing framework, which is very similar to our spec and the app delegate. So this is the entry point um, for, for the apps we build using Ruby motion. Okay, so to, uh, to run Ruby motion in navigation, uh, first I'll just um, do a bundle install. So this installs all, everything we have in a gem file. And then we'll just say rake. And rake will uh, build the project, uh, compile everything that we have in our app folder. Um, and then it starts the simulator. So there's a few new things in here. So Ruby is, we're still programming in Ruby, but it's a re-implemented Ruby. Um, so on the right side, we have our project uh, navigation. It's, it's right there. So we can exit and um, go back into Vim and have a look at app delegate. So this is where everything happens. So the first thing I did was to get rid of um, get rid of everything in app delegate. And I wanted to understand what exactly app delegate was for and how it works. Okay, so um, to do that, I'm just going to have a look at some diagrams. Um, slide. So on the left side, we'll have our, our UI application, which is the delegator. And then we we'll have the UI application delegate, which is the receiver. So at different points of our app, at app launch time, uh, we could check uh, will launch, which is just checking the app will is about to launch. We we'll send that information to UI application delegate. And the same for did launch. And another instance, um, during a life cycle is the state transition. So we could check that the app has entered the foreground and then we report that to UI application or we could check that it has gone into the background and we report that to UI application. Another uh, important part is the notifications and events. So when we have a remote notification arrive to our app, um, UI application knows about it and when we, we lock our device the same occurs. So these are just uh, just some of the times. Uh, so there are still quite a few more which are on the documentation uh, website. So that's what um, application delegate is there for, is to be notified of key moments within our app. So UI application delegates to our UI application delegate. So if we come down here, we could see some launch time methods. Okay, application will finish uh, launch options. So let's um, write some code to cover will launch and did launch and make sure that the information is sent to the delegate. So that's what I want to see, uh, just to see how that works. Okay, so what I did was come into my application delegate and define that method that I expect to be called when the app um, did launch, okay, uh, with options. So this is a named parameter and launch options is passed into it. And this method uh, expects uh, true or false to be returned. 
All right, so if we uh, have a look at the documentation, uh, click on did launch. Uh, so this is the return set boolean. Uh, this is the method name. Uh, the first parameter of the type your application did finish uh, name and then the actual um, parameter. So the launch options is, that is just a dictionary that tells you why your app was launched. Okay, so with that in mind, I'm just going to say print uh, to screen called in did launch. Okay, so it's just called a did launch method. So this way, when I launch the app, I want to see if this is printed in the REPL. All right, so we launch, we recompile um, our app delegate because we edited it. So start simulation is started and nothing is printed on the REPL. Okay, so I'm assuming I have done something wrong. I haven't typed something properly. Application did launch. Ah, so I haven't I haven't put the name parameter properly. So application did finish launching. So they re-implemented uh, Ruby. You sort of uh, the named parameter plus the name of the method come together to form the method signature. So you have to get it right. So I suppose this is a, a test in a way to prove. And there we go on the left side called in did launch. So just before our app launched, it's basically, um, or just when it did launch, it called that. So I'm just going to um, copy this and I paste this here. So I have two methods called application, which is fine. So I just change the named parameter here to will finish launching, which is a different uh, expectation. So although we have did here, here we have will. So this gives us a completely different method. So this is an objective C style. So it allows us to have the same method, but the signature make them different. All right, so when I run rake, and we'll have a look at the repo here. So we should have called in will launch and called in did launch. So it calls it in that order. So just before and just after did launch. So that basically proves our app delegate does receive uh, methods when we need it to. So I'm just gonna get rid of this and get rid of this. And that concludes this lesson. In the next lesson, I would um, show what next, what I did next. So I'll see you in the next lesson.